1.19 time it is. Looking forward to this very much. He's a great old mate. It's been a long time since we've connected. Uh, warm welcome to the program, Clarkie. How are you? Uh, not too bad, or should I say Bull of an Arkham? Go on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, <laughs> I, I've been glued. I'm addicted to the Andrua home games. And hearing your voice calling, I just thought, I said to Locke, we've got to get hold of Greg because he's there in the state. He's actually calling this. So how glorious an experience has it been? Two games at home, they've had two wins and, and great wins over the Crusaders in that nail biter against New South Wales. Yeah, well, this is my third season now, and um, I have to pinch myself every now and again because it was a funny way that uh, I was introduced to it. Um, I wasn't asked to do it. I was told to call the games by an old mate of mine, Brian Thorburn, who was the initial acting CEO, and uh, we went through plenty of technical issues and plenty of travel issues and all that sort of drama, but um, we're into season three now, and... uh, Oh, look, I, I thought I'd seen it all, mate, you know, travelling around the world with that job that I had at Fox Sports. It was um, quite amazing. But um, this is something new and, uh, you know, you have to pinch yourself every now and again. The hairs stand up in the back of your neck. Um, you know, it's a, it's just a wonderful occasion when uh, everything goes right for the draw. And so far at home this year, as you say, wins over the Crusaders and the Waratahs. And uh, they've got the force of this week, another Aussie team that they haven't beaten yet. So uh, good luck to the force playing in those conditions. Yeah, I mean, we've got so many questions. Let's start with that uh, because once again, it's a two o'clock kickoff. Uh, Greg, uh, well, I'm I'm presuming that <laughs> you've got full air conditioning in that suite of yours. Of course, I don't probably you probably haven't, but how just how hot and how humid and how taxing is that heat? Oh, it's 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 everything you know that you you expect from uh, Fiji from uh, from the weather there. We we do have air conditioning. The only problem is that if the humidity rises too much, um, uh, the, the glass on the commentary box fogs up. So you've got to turn the air conditioning off. I don't know if you saw glimpses of um, uh, Big Namani Nandolo, who is now wearing a 4XL shirt. Um, uh, alongside me, uh, even in the in the air conditioning, he's sweating. And uh, Simon Rawalui was in Mick Burns' coaching box the other day, and he had a, a towel on his face pretty much the whole way through the the thing. So yeah, it, it's very uh, very hot, not only for the players, but especially for the players, obviously, but the fans uh, as well. And look, I spoke to some um, uh, board members from the Waratahs, and they're calling it a bucket list trip. Um, you know, they sweated wow. their way through not one game but two games because it was a double header the women played afterwards. And, um, you know, they just couldn't believe what they'd seen. And these are guys who run corporations and, you know, travel around the world and go to sports uh, events everywhere. Um, and, and they're putting it right up there at the top of, um, you know, some of the things they've done in, the, in sport as a spectator. So it's, uh, it's very taxing on, on everybody. And um, you can just see after the game, uh, the Crusaders had quite a few players who were suffering from heat stroke. After the game, uh, the Waratahs, Charlie Gamble, they were very concerned about him because he played the full 80 and, you know, as a seven, as a loose, he, he had a busy game and um, he was down and out at the uh, at the end of it as well. So, yeah, it's a bit of a drama. People think that they put it on in the middle of the day on purpose, but um, it's a television schedule. It's it's one o'clock local time, uh, yeah, the, the, the heat of the day. Um, but, of course, as you know, uh, these games have got to run into each other. New Zealand's not going to give up a, you know, a 5 No, well, that's right. That's right. Game, yeah. Yeah, let's and be Australia's honest. Australia's not yeah. going to give up, uh, give up their time frame. So you have to play it at uh, at 1 o'clock, whether you like it or not. Although the, the Hurricanes have probably got the better end of the stick because uh, when they go to, to Suva at the end of April or mid-April, um, it will be under lights on a Friday night. So it'll still be hot, but at least it's um, going to be kicking off at 7 p.m. and not 1 p.m. If for anyone who hasn't been to beautiful Fiji, then just put that perspective on us um, where Nandi is, where La Tolka is, where Suva is. So, how you know, what kind of distance between all three? Well, from, from Auckland, you'll fly direct into, into Nandi. Uh, from the east coast of Australia, you fly direct into, uh, into Nandi. So, so Nandi, uh, the trip up to La Tolka is probably um, on match day, it might take you 45 minutes. Um, but it's a fairly leisurely trip uh, in a taxi or a bus um, up to up to Lautoka. Um And then for, for uh, Suva, if you've got the time, you drive around the Coral Coast, around the Queens Road, down the, uh, the South Road, and it's probably about a four-hour trip, and you can stop off at Singatoka and various uh, resorts along the way. Um, or you can take a little 20-minute flight from Nandi across to, across to Suva. 
So they're playing five games in Lautoka and two in Suva this year because uh, they're laying a new athletics track at the big stadium in in uh, in Suva. So it wasn't quite ready um, for the start of of the year. Um, and look, there's it, it's 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 certainly not a, a you know a great stadium. Uh, they're, they're doing their best. Uh, they've got you know, temporary stands here and there, and the big grass bank. Um, I, I think the maximum crowd uh, at La Toca is probably about 15, maybe 14 and 15,000 in, in Suba, but it sounds like 50. Yeah, because, yeah it comes know, out the TV like that. Much yeah. noise. Mm. And, they, and they all have their umbrellas, whether it's uh, hot or, or raining, and uh, it always looks absolutely jam-packed, but uh, there's usually only one person under that umbrella, so they take up a bit of room. But, yeah, I think there was probably nine or 10,000 there the other day, but uh, they just start at the kickoff, and, and the, the horns are blowing, the, the, they're screaming and yelling. Um, not only for themselves, but also for the opposition as well, because they just love their 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 rugby. And remember, before the draw came along, these Fijians, you know, supported a lot of Kiwi teams in particular because they've all had you know um, Fijian Fijian yeah. players mm. playing for them. So, so you know, the, the the Crusaders had a had a bumper crowd there um, uh, because Sebu Reese was obviously playing and a couple of others. Um, and um, you know, even uh, the Waratahs had Lungi Gleeson the other day and Mark Wangadi Dawasi. So. The people from their villages, you know, all turned up in their droves as, as well. So it's just a wonderful carnival atmosphere. A couple of quick questions before we let you go, Greg, and I always thank you so much for your time, mate. Look, you know, as soon as I'm watching these games, I'm just thinking, wow, I mean, how cool would it be for MP to be, you know, having some home matches in Samoa and Tonga? It's got to be the future of the competition, doesn't it? For for one or two reasons. A, because for so long, this part of the world, we pay lip service to island rugby. Well, this isn't paying lip service. This is actually paying something back. Uh, which is so important. I also just think that the away fixture for the other teams, there's got to be a home court advantage. This provides that. And and it also makes me think, wow, you know, I know New Zealand rugby say they've got a whole lot of reasons why we're playing Fiji and San Diego, but really, I mean, you know, how hard would it have been to actually get this? And how meaningful would it have been if the All Blacks one time could take a test match up and play Fiji and Fiji? It'd be, it'd be fantastic. Um, um, the reason why the All Blacks have taken the game to San Diego, they were desperate, my understanding is, they were desperate to have a home and away, but especially to play in Suva. But the board of Fiji Rugby is still only interim, uh, and, and World Rugby is wor- working with them to try and finalise that. But it's not... The Flying Fijians are not the, the Drua. The Drua is a commercial operation. Uh, Brent P, the former boss of you know, the New Zealand Rugby Board, he, he's on the board of the Drua. They've got a representative from World Rugby. Uh, it, it's it's set up, set up as, as its own. Uh, it's getting money. Uh, New Zealand Rugby, Australian Rugby, uh, Australian government is, is, is contributing for the first few, few years. Um, completely different Fiji rugby. New Zealand really could be for something like an all-black test. So it'll happen down the track, I'm sure of that, but it just w- was too soon. And uh, that's that's why they're going to San Diego, which is uh, which is a real shame. But, yeah, I think a lot of people just assume that the Drua is Fiji rugby. It's not. Two separate entities, and Fiji rugby has, has got its problems at the moment, and they've got to sort it out.